Hey guys, I'm Sagar and this is my full review of the OnePlus X. Just after the launch of OnePlus 2 in August this year, OnePlus revealed that they will be bringing another smartphone to the market before the end of this year. And just a few weeks back, OnePlus launched their latest smartphone at the price of Rs 16,999 and called it the OnePlus X. Now, instead of being a mini version of the OnePlus 2, like everyone expected it to be, it turned out to be a glamoured up version of the OnePlus One. In an effort to make the phone look and feel premium, OnePlus ditched the sandstone back which we saw on both of its previous smartphones and chose to go with a glass back for the new phone. The OnePlus X is completely covered with glass which curves around the edges at the front and back and has a chamfered metal frame with micro grooves around it. It just looks fantastic. The one which I have here is called Onyx. Another version of this phone with a ceramic back will be launched later. It will be produced in limited quantities and will cost more than the Onyx version. Just as always, OnePlus is still sticking with the invite system to sell this phone, which is just getting annoying day by day. After you go through this painful invite system, you get a beautifully built phone with a 5-inch Full HD AMOLED screen. Under the hood, you have a Snapdragon 801 processor, Adreno 330 GPU, 3GB of RAM, 13MP rear and 8MP front-facing camera. With all this, OnePlus has also managed to stuff in a 2525mAh battery in such a slim phone. While this phone looks amazing, it's also worth noting that since it is made of glass, it is extremely slippery. If you accidentally drop the OnePlus X, then that Gorilla Glass on both sides of the phone will definitely shatter. The glass at the back and also the front for that matter are fingerprint magnets. It's just too hard to keep this device smudge free. OnePlus has tried to offer a solution for both these problems. They acknowledge the fact that the phone might slip out of your hand and they do offer a free silicon case with each device. It's nice as it adds a lot of grip to the phone. It's also translucent so you still see the back of the device and the beautiful OnePlus logo. The case also helps you to keep the back of the phone fingerprint free. I loved the alert slider that OnePlus introduced with the OnePlus 2 and it's good to see the same being carried on to the OnePlus X. It's a really convenient way to change the profile of your phone. The power button and the volume rocker on the right side also have a little texture to them and you get a very satisfying tactile feedback while pressing them. The speaker at the bottom gets loud enough, but it distorts at higher volumes. Another thing to note is, only the grill on the left side has a speaker under it. The grill on the right side only houses the microphone. The capacitive buttons on this phone are not backlit, making it very difficult to view them in any kind of lighting conditions. Many people might just end up using the software buttons instead of these capacitive buttons, which is a shame considering the amount of customization that can be added while using the capacitive buttons. Also by using the on-screen navigation buttons, you tend to miss out on some of the screen real estate. The SIM tray can hold two nano SIM cards or one nano SIM card and one micro SD card to expand the internal storage of the OnePlus X. Adding the expandable storage option to this phone is a great move by OnePlus, but I would still prefer it to have a dual SIM capability and the expandable storage option together. The display is the one area where OnePlus did not hold anything back while designing this phone. It has got a 5-inch Full HD AMOLED display whose pixel density comes at 441 pixels per inch. The images and text on the screen are so crisp it is a treat to look at. Using the AMOLED panel means you get very bright colors and deep blacks. The screen gets bright enough to be viewed under any lighting conditions. AMOLED displays actually help save the battery of a smartphone by not lighting up the black colored pixels on the screen. OnePlus took advantage of this and made the dark mode of the Oxygen OS to be on by default on the OnePlus X. They have also added a bunch of beautiful wallpapers with deep black colors in them, just for this phone. There is also an ambient mode where you get glances of your notifications in a power saving mode. You can then tap on the screen to view the notifications that you want. This helps save a lot of battery and the phone lasts longer on a single charge. This is hands down the best display on any smartphone in under 20,000 rupees. This phone is running the second version of the Oxygen OS which is based on Android 5.1.1.
aside from the Nexus lineup and Motorola phones, Oxygen OS is as close as an operating system can get to a stock Android experience. It has all the goodness of pure Android with the added benefits of huge amount of customization options. You can customize the whole operating system to your liking. You have the option to use the on-screen or capacitive buttons, assigning the capacitive buttons to perform separate actions on double tapping and long pressing them, change the accent color of the entire theme, change the theme itself. You can also use the gestures like double tap to wake the screen, draw a circle on the locked phone to open the camera app, draw a V to turn the flash on and off, and many more customizations like these. All of this, combined with the continuous updates which OnePlus pushes out to improve the user experience, makes the Oxygen OS one of the best skins I have ever used on any Android smartphone. The internal specifications of this phone lags behind the competition in some aspects. The Snapdragon 801 processor used here is a year old, which makes it a bit outdated. The Adreno 330 GPU has also been around since a while now, and it definitely shows its age while playing some graphics intensive games. 3GB of RAM is good as it helps the phone to be better at multitasking. With these internals, the OnePlus X just scores average in the benchmark tests. But at this price point, these are some of the best specs you can get. All of the apps open smoothly and you won't see any noticeable lag while using this phone. That is until you start playing some graphics intensive games. Temple Run 2 had no problems running smoothly on this device but it definitely dropped frames when I started playing Real Racing 3. Asphalt 8 was almost unplayable at the highest settings, so I turned it down to medium and I could still see few frame drops. It's only when I turned the settings to low I was able to play this game smoothly. But while playing Nova 3, I did not have any dropped frames, which was kind of a surprise to me, as that game demands a lot of power from the GPU. If you are a casual gamer, then you won't have any issue with this phone. All games like Candy Crush Saga, Angry Birds, Temple Run 2, Subway Surfer work just fine on this smartphone. One good thing about this phone is that, even after playing games for a long time, this phone did not get noticeably hot. It did get a bit warm, but that is to be expected of any smartphone. The camera on the OnePlus X is decent and you can get some good images out of it. It's a good camera at this price point but it's definitely not the best camera on a smartphone. If you need a detailed camera review with sample images and videos, then you can watch a separate video which I made about the camera quality of the OnePlus X. I'll leave an annotation to that video on the screen and also link to it in the description section. The 2525mAh battery combined with the AMOLED display and dark mode should easily last you for a day. With my typical usage of about an hour of making and receiving phone calls using Twitter, watching some YouTube videos, playing games, and some casual web browsing, I usually ended the day with about 3 hours and 40 minutes of screen on time, with 18 to 23% of juice still remaining in the battery. So I would say the battery life of this phone is decent. One of the disappointments which I have with this phone is that it does not support wireless charging or fast charging. I tried to charge it with various fast chargers, but no matter how fast your charger is, the OnePlus X charges at the same slow speed. To make a premium looking phone and still keep the cost down, OnePlus had to cut some corners. Other than the spectacular looking handset which feels much more premium than what it costs and the 5 inch Full HD AMOLED screen, all other things are just what you could expect out of a smartphone priced at 17,000 rupees or 249 US dollars. With an average camera which has no hardware or software image stabilization and no 4K videos, no NFC, no wireless and fast charging, no dual band Wi-Fi, no fingerprint scanner, no backlight for capacitive buttons, and a processor and GPU which is almost outdated. The OnePlus X does not look very good of a smartphone. But despite of lacking so many things, I still feel I should recommend this phone. There is just something about this phone that appeals to me. I like beautifully designed products and this phone definitely checks that box. Adding in the 5 inch Full HD AMOLED screen, the alert slider, an option to expand the storage via microSD card and with the ability to comfortably use it with one hand. I just think it's too good of a device to not recommend it to someone who is looking for a smartphone in under 20,000 rupees. So there you have it guys. It has been a tough decision to make, but the OnePlus X is definitely worth considering if you are looking for a 5 inch smartphone with the best display in under 20,000 rupees. That is it for this video guys. 
please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe to my channel for more cool videos like this you can also check out some of the other videos on my channel this is sagar and i'll see you guys in the next video take care